Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well today. This video is going to be on the top five things <clears throat> that you need to consider when you're going to go purchase a dulcimer. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so you want to purchase a dulcimer. It doesn't matter if it's new or used, okay? You need to think about these things, all right, and consider them. The first one is extremely important, okay? So if you're only going to listen till then, just listen to the first one, okay? Some people don't, they get upset if I have a video that's 10 or 15 minutes long, but, um, you know, have a little patience, I guess, is all I can say. I, I don't know. Um, anyway, number one, the number one thing you should be thinking about when you go to purchase a dulcimer is the VSL. Now, that stands for vibrating string length, okay? And what that means is simply the, the nut and the bridge, the string space between the nut and the bridge, that is your vibrating string length, okay? And why is that important? Well, it's important because that's going to affect your fret spacing going down your fretboard, okay? So how far apart are those frets? On a dulcimer that's 29 inches, I cannot reach anything. And it hurts my wrist and um, stuff to play a dulcimer that's that big. If you're playing a lot with your fingers, cording and noting there, not using the noter, you're going to want a shorter VSL to the size of your hand, basically. Now, um, it's odd, but I, I really haven't seen people talking about this much. But it, to me, it's the very it's the most important thing to talk about because uh, it does make a difference. And um, common lengths are 25 all the way up to 29. The smaller ones than that, <clears throat> they have a different name. Um, but they do have smaller ones as, than that as well. But anywhere from a 25 to a 29 is what you'll usually see. Now, uh, based on the size of your hand, you're going to want a different thing. Now, for me, what I prefer, and I just have an average-sized hand. I wouldn't say it's oversized, um, and I wouldn't say it's small. But I absolutely love a 25-inch VSO. Oh. I can play a 26, I can manage a 26 and a half, you start getting into that 27, I start having reach problems, and I start stressing out everything going all the way up, and uh, it hurts for me. Um, so, you, the best thing you can possibly do is talk to somebody about it before you buy it, okay? I know from personal experience that you can reach out to craft and talk to them and they will help you pick the right size for your hand and what style of play you want to do and all that um, but VSL is extremely extremely important now I'm gonna put that video up here for you to see it I made a video that is really in-depth about it tells you all about it and it shows you about six different sizes so you can look at the difference in the picture um, and I just talk about it there um, and explain all the ins and outs of it check that out if you want to <clears throat> another thing I'm leaving this space over here open because during this I'm going to be popping up a bunch of slides and different things so okay that covers number one number two woods okay so obviously your dulcimer is made out of a whole bunch of different pieces of wood from your fingerboard to the top, to the sides, to the back. You, you can just have tons of combinations of wood there. <clears throat> All of those different combinations are going to make different sounds, okay? <clears throat> so, if you can't go play an instrument, I do not have the luxury of going anywhere really close by <clears throat> to play more than maybe one dulcimer. So, there's nothing to compare. Someday I hope to get in a shop where there's a ton of dulcimers for me to just listen to the different sounds they make, okay? But as far as wood combinations go, you can read up on all the different tone woods and what they are known for, okay? Some woods are going to be warmer sounding, some are going to be brighter sounding, and you're going to want to make your choices based on that. Another thing you're going to want to consider in woods, at least I do, is appearance, okay? Okay. I want it to look a certain way too, you know, and um, like I have an all cherry dulcimer. All the wood on it is cherry. 
I did that for a reason. It's a warmer type of sound than the other dulcimer that I have that's lighter in color and the woods are different, in other words. Um, but woods are important as well. All right, number three, frets. How is your instrument fretted? Okay. There's a lot of different combinations and you might know not know what you want to do. Um, but one thing you want is at least, in my opinion, you want a six and a half fret. Okay. And anything that's been built since about the mid 1980s should have the six and a half fret. You can ask the person if you're buying it used or whatever, make sure it's got the six and a half. If you're buying it new, it'll list that I'm sure. Um, so that would be your first added fret kind of thing. Next, you would get into the dulcimers that have the one and a half and eight and a half added as well as the higher up ones. But, uh, those, that is my favorite combination right there, having that one and a half. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, I like the one and a half because I can easily make a C chord that sounds really nice. And I like having a C chord because I'll be playing with a guitar. Uh, my husband plays guitar, you know, so he hits that C. It's just so simple for me to hit that C there. Now there are other places up the fingerboard that I could play a C, but I like it right there in that first position closest to the nut there. So you've also got some seven chords and some minors and stuff that you can play there with that. Now, you can play those up at using the six and a half fret, but I like playing them down there, okay? Um, so, that is my favorite combination, okay? Beyond that, you get into having the half fret, and then you might as well have a chromatic fretboard where you have all the frets, okay? Where there's no spaces, um, and that's all things to consider when you want to buy it. How are you going to play it? How do you think you're going to play it? Now, I will say that as for chromatic playing, there's not a lot of material out there. There's some, but there's not tons of material like there is on how to play it as much as there is on standard. Okay. Um, it's just something to consider. Uh, next is the overall size and shape of your dulcimer okay so there's two very common shapes the hourglass and the teardrop okay there's other shapes too but those are the most common now um you have a smaller sound box when you play a teardrop so you might notice if you're playing it next to a hourglass still somewhere let's say you might notice some diminished overall volume but you're usually going to be playing it in a place where you're at home or even even out in public whatever you a dulcimer is not supposed to be very loud okay um and without amplification it doesn't really fit in with louder instruments like a banjo with a you know, a metal tone ring that makes it loud, okay? Um, you can, you can amplify it. You can do things to lift it up off of your lap. If it's not on your lap, it's not deadened by your lap, okay? So uh, there's Galax backs that can be put onto them uh, when they're built, or there's things called possum boards that's just a piece of wood that's got some spacers there that you set your dulcimer on it, and it lifts it up off of your lap. And a, a way to do this is just put the dulcimer in your lap, strum it, and then lift it up. Okay? Or put it on a table, strum it, and then put it on your lap, strum it. You'll notice a big difference there. It just deadens it with, with your legs there. But you've also got, you know, along with the size of it, uh, along with the shape of it, you've got the size of it. Okay? How deep is it? You know? How big is the overall body? There's different sizes. And these things are going to be something to take into consideration. You know, is this thing a behemoth? Does it not even fit in your lap? That's something to consider. Um, 
a lot of it is appearance as well. You're going to be drawn to something you like the looks of. Um, number five, the last thing I wanted to talk about here with you was hybrids. Okay. There's like any other instrument, there's a million hybrids. Okay. So, um, I've played it before on my channel here, the dulcijo. Okay. And that is more of a banjo with a dulcimer fretboard. Okay. Meaning it's played more like a banjo. It's not going to be played in your lap. Okay. Um, there's four string equidistant. Okay. And that's a lot different and it's played differently. Normally that is played finger picking style and not necessarily strummed normally. Some, I mean, there's exceptions to everything. These are not rules or anything, but there's four string dulcimers. There's six string dulcimers. There's baritone dulcimers. There's bass dulcimers. There's resonator dulcimers. There's a lap Joe dulcimer that is a dulcimer first and a banjo second. And it's played like a dulcimer. It plays in your lap, fretted like a dulcimer, but it's got the banjo head. And I'm going to be getting my hands on one of those pretty soon. I'm going to buy one. <laughs> so um, you'll see that as well. But there's all these hybrids you can do as well. And um, so those are things to think about when you're buying one. Um, you know, another added thing that's not really in the list is what are you going to want to do with it? Are you going to want to just play it for your own enjoyment at home? And uh, to learn to play some music, that's going to affect, you know, some of these things that you pick out. Are you going to want to take it out and play with a band with it or somewhere where it needs to be amplified? That's something to consider, too, because um, you can get them where they're already installed. Really nice pickups. Um, so there's just a lot of different things to think about. But I really want you to pay attention to number one above all else because that's going to affect your playability. And, you know, if you have trouble with your hands, okay, uh, as far as reaching and uh, playing it, you're not going to want to play it, you know. Or beyond that, let's say you, you might be developing arthritis in your hands or something like that shorter VSL is going to be a lot more comfortable for you to play. Um, so anyway, all right. I wanted to cover that. I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you enjoyed all the little pop-ups <laughs> that I put up there. Um, I hope that helps you make your decision when you go to buy, um, any dulcimer. Uh, yeah, I do have affiliate links down below for things that I like to use. And if you watch any of my videos, you know I use every one of these things that you see down there. <laughs> um, but if you are thinking about purchasing um, something, if you purchase it through my link, I get a little bit of a commission there. Uh, and, you know, it helps, it helps out the channel, so I appreciate it. People have been using my links now for a little while, and it's, I really appreciate it. So thank you if you have, and thank you if you're going to. Um, but beyond that, I want you to purchase a dulcimer and do it fast <laughs> because you're going to really enjoy it. Okay. It's going to bring you joy. You're going to love it. If you've already bought dulcimers, you know this already, but, um, if you're thinking about buying them, you know, I, I do get a lot of questions from people, Mandy, where should I go to get a dulcimer or look at this? Should I buy this? Please don't send me pictures of dulcimers asking me if you should buy it. I don't know. I, I'm not there to, with my measuring tape to measure the VSL and hear it and really look it over. So I, I can't be of much help there. Um, but again, those affiliate links, that's where I like to go get stuff. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you got something out of it. And before I go, I always want to remind you that Jesus loves you. Bye-bye, y'all.